Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now's live coverage of Snowflake Summit in Las Vegas, the world's largest data and AI conference. I'm now joined by Jesse Cugliotta, Global Industry Lead for Healthcare and Life Sciences at Snowflake, along with Paul Bryant, Chief Product Officer at Athena Health. Gentlemen, such a pleasure having you on the program. Nice Thank to be you. having us. You know, Jesse, let's start with you. Over the past three years, arguably the sector that has seen the most change is healthcare and life sciences. What trends are you noticing and what's top of mind for customers? Yeah, well you're absolutely right. I mean, over the past four years, this, this industry has undergone tremendous change. It was literally at the front lines of dealing with the pandemic that we all lived through. Um, it's also an industry that's really sitting on a tremendous amount of data. And, and what, what's really exciting is that this industry historically has really not been known for being the most innovative when compared with some others. But we're seeing that start to change. We're really seeing an acceleration in the, in the use of data, analytics, and AI to solve some of the biggest challenges that this industry has historically faced. And I always think about this uh, you know, uh, uh, from a, a personal example, because my wife works in healthcare. She's an emergency doc at a, a local hospital where we live in Philadelphia. And one of the challenges she's been talking about is, is nurse staffing. They said, you know, they've lost up to six nurses over the last four months. Uh, and, and this is a trend that we're seeing really all around the industry is that as the volumes have come back into emergency departments and into, into health systems in general, nurses are burnt out. You know, they've dealt with three years of really difficult circumstances. Uh, and, and they can't necessarily keep them on staff given the accelerated volumes that they've had. Uh, and at the same time, everyone is trying to figure out, is there a way that I can predict when this might actually right. happen? Because you know, the reasons that are driving attrition in her hospital are going to be different than some other one where maybe it's around salary versus staffing or versus uh, patient volumes, for example. Uh, so everyone is, is looking towards us to say, can we actually use something like Snowflake to actually start to build models to, to predict when attrition is going to happen and understand what are the influence factors that are pertinent to a local community health system versus a big inner city hospital. So I was really excited when I heard about some of the announcements we made yesterday around some of our new ML powered functions around time series forecasting, uh, anomaly detection, and, and being able to determine which are the likely influence factors that are meaningful in each individual situation. You know, Jesse, great to have a baseline. And to your point, it's clearly all happening here at Summit, and it's great to be joined by Athena Health. And, and Paul, from your perspective, you're providing best-in-class healthcare IT services for your customers. You know, what's top of mind for you, and what's the data showing you, and how does Snowflake in the data cloud having a direct impact on the overall success at Athena Health? Well, we support uh, physician practices across the country, from the single doc practices to some of the largest practices out there. And really what the data cloud has allowed us to do is to unify the data across all of those practices into one place. And we've been able to take it then and identify patterns that suggest how practices are performing and provide that back to the practices in you know, quasi real time so they can make adjustments. You know, If you look at the practices that we have, and we've got you know, 10,000 so practices out there, um, you know, the bottom quartile don't perform that well. Uh, the top quartile are awesome. Right. And providing those insights, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to get the bottom quartile up to the median. <laughs> it's like, like, please just get there. <laughs> uh, and the data cloud allows us to do that. Um, we launched a product called uh, Insights Dashboard, which runs directly on the data cloud and is available for, for all practices at all times so they can benchmark themselves. Uh, they don't even need us to do it. You know, Jesse, you mentioned the announcements that happened yesterday at Summit. Talk of the town is very much Gen AI and LLMs. For both of you gentlemen, what impact do you see this technology having in the healthcare industry collectively? Paul, we'd love your thoughts. You know, it, when you first saw Gen AI work, right, you kind of go, oh my God, this is like one of those moments in, in, in invention history. Like, like this is a radical step forward. Um, and I think that it ultimately will have a hopefully a very big impact on reducing some of the administrative burden, some of the documentation burden, you know, allowing doctors to be doctors and nurses to be nurses, um, and not have to do as much administrivia. Um, you know, it's not quite there yet, um, especially in medicine, you got to be really careful about the hallucination effect. Um, you know, if you're a lawyer and you have some hallucination, you get slapped on the wrist by a judge. If you're a doctor and you have a hallucination. We're talking about lives. <laughs> lives are at <laughs> yeah, stake. Lives are at stake. Right. So you got to be really careful about that. But, you know, once we get those issues resolved, um, I think this is just going to be part of, the, of the, the EMR companion. Like, you know, the doctor goes in, the EMR really is a useful companion around providing insights about their patients they might not have otherwise gleaned or had to have read a whole, you know, 70 page CCDA to be able to understand, um, be, be able to then you know, have the doctor interact with the patient and then have the Gen AI help with the documentation process uh, and then help with all, some, all, all the offline communication. And you know, one of the 
biggest frustrations our doctors have is, is the inbox. Right. So if you're a patient and you, you know, want to talk to your doctor, now you can message them, which is great, except for if you're the doctor, you get this long things you have to do that are kind of outside of the context of directly providing care. Very important. Um, and you know, Gen AI is going to play a big role there in terms of uh, helping the physicians respond appropriately to their patients. You know, and the end result of that, helping to, to limit that burnout, Jesse, that, that you mentioned earlier, exactly. would love your perspective as well. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned around uh, you know, some of the, the, the use cases around documentation. Uh, so my brother-in-law, he works as a clinical psychologist at a hospital as well, and, and one of the things I found interesting is he said, we have moved faster to adopt this technology than we have any other one that's really ever kind of hit this ecosystem. And they said, you know, this is great because a lot of these mundane tasks, like we're writing a, a letter of medical necessity, or we're writing page, patient instructions, or some sort of disposition write-up, we can now do that so much faster, and yes, to your point, there are hallucinations that are possible, but at least you can get a first draft very quickly that someone can review, versus having to go line by line and actually execute themselves. Uh, so you're starting to see kind of this new openness uh, to this technology in a way that we haven't seen in this industry in the past. And then the other interesting thing too is, is kind of on the other side, and not just about the, the generative aspect of AI, but can I use natural language to actually go and search and get answers from my data itself? Um, you know, you know, if you wanted to say, you know, give me every example of a patient that was ex exhibiting severe lower white, lower right quadrant pain, for example, you know, that would probably be something like, you know, select these field <laughs> names from these tables where these conditions equal X. Seems inefficient. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and everyone at this, this conference can do that no problem, right? We're in good company for something like that. But your average clinician is not going to have that necessary right. skill set. But now they can ask that question in, 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 you know, in English. So the language of, of interacting with data has become the language that we're speaking right now. And I think that really opens up a, a tremendous number of possibilities in this industry that haven't existed before. You know, gentlemen, I know we, we've covered a lot, but want to dive a little bit further into the future as well. You know, the data cloud collaborations happening all around us. From your perspective, what's next and what's top of mind for each of you? Paul, if you'd like to start. You know, healthcare is, 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 is a data industry. I mean, right. it's all about data and patterns and recognizing those patterns and learning what works and what doesn't. And I think we're really starting to unlock, especially if you add genomics into the mix, uh, a whole new frontier for medicine. I mean, discoveries are coming fast and furious. Uh, new drugs are coming out. Um, and I think we're going to see a whole lot more innovation as a result of just having all the data, having it codified, and having it available for, for life sciences and research. And uh, it's just a, it's a frontier that we haven't had yet. And Jesse, from your perspective, what's top of mind as you look out? You know, on the collaboration front, and you just mentioned some of the new medicines and therapies, but we're starting to see a lot of interest in use cases to say, how can we better bring different entities in the industry together at the level of their actual data uh, to be able to make better decisions and make those in real time? And, you know, I think about some of these new therapies that you just mentioned here. Uh, I was at a conference recently where the discussion was all around cell and gene therapy. And these are, you know, these are therapies that aren't just a simple pill that you take. You're literally taking a, a tissue sample from the patient in many cases, you're bringing it to a, a specific facility where the, the genetic code is edited, and that has to be transported and put back into the patient all under strict temperature control and regulation. And typically it all has to happen in you know, about a week and a half. Uh, so you know, the ability to be able to, to share information and collaborate given all of the different entities that are involved from the payer who has to pay for this, from the healthcare providers who are taking the samples, from the cold chain logistics providers who are moving it around to the manufacturers themselves, and ultimately bringing it back to the patient, being able to communicate in real time is really critical to be able to pulling that off effectively. So we see ourselves as really well positioned at Snowflake to help enable that because many of those customers are already customers using right. Snowflake in and of themselves today. Uh, and they're just now realizing that the rest of them all exist in our ecosystem as well. Well gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. We can hear the buzz and excitement all around us here at Snowflake Summit. It's been a pleasure to have you on Data Cloud Now. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green. We'll see you soon. Thank you.